What's up, fam? Happy May the 4th. I got my Star Wars shirt on. I find your lack of strength disturbing. One of my uh, favorite ones today. Hope you guys are repping your Star Wars apparel. Make sure you do that. Uh, this is a, should be a national holiday. Um, but anyway, what I wanted to talk about today, guys, uh, we've got quite a few people, uh, specifically, uh, in my, uh, like social network, uh, that are going to be competing in a few weeks. And to be honest, uh, as summer and spring pick up restrictions left on places and states, uh, competitions are happening more often around the United States and the world. So that's good news for powerlifting, of course. Um, and I wanted to make a video real quick to talk about some essential things, specifically 10 things uh, that you are going to want to do uh, if you're going into a competition um, and just some like advice and tips. Okay. Uh, these are like, no, none of these are hard and fast. Uh, this is like my opinion. This is what I think. Uh, is important to focus on, uh, mostly for beginners. Uh, you know, obviously you can always revisit as an experienced lifter, uh, these things and kind of remind yourself of, uh, why you need to do them. Uh, but other than that, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, the first one, guys, uh, this one again is only for beginners, really. Uh, and it's don't cut weight. Uh, I think it's a huge, uh, mistake for beginners to, cut weight, especially within, uh, you know, four to six weeks of competition. It just doesn't make sense because uh, when you're first going into your powerlifting meet, honestly, uh, you're trying to just go nine for nine, okay? You should not be worried about setting records or doing anything fancy um, or even winning or anything like that. Just focus on performing, uh, going through, uh, you know, a proper peak, proper program, recovery, and learning all that stuff. Uh, so that when you do actually get a chance to be competitive or aim for a specific goal, total place or whatever, uh, it's a little bit e easier to do that. Okay. Um, it's going to add a lot of stress too. Uh, that's another thing we want to consider, you know, before we're in a competition is not adding too much stress to our body other than the stress from training. Um, don't wait until you're more competitive. This is a big one. Uh, I think a lot of beginners that when I uh, first start talking to them, they have this like notion of like powerlifters needing to be this like divine uh, like strength class and you got to be a certain type of strong and you got to get certain numbers to do certain things and that's just not true at all. I'm at, I've been to plenty of meets uh, and all of them have had a range of people that in a range of strength in every weight class. Um, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. You go lift whenever you're ready. All right. It doesn't matter what kind of weight you're pressing, uh, or squatting or pulling. Um, and then, uh, the third one here, set a realistic goal. We want to make sure that we don't over exceed ourselves. Um, this is going to go, uh, into a couple other goals as well or sorry, other points as well. Um, but we want to make sure that when we're on meet day slash tr leading up to training, peaking, whatever, we are setting realistic numbers, realistic goals. We are not setting ourselves up for failure by expecting maybe like a 20, 30 pound PR or a 50 pound PR, some crazy number like that. Um, and like, honestly, we want to make sure that those goals are going to be manageable. So 10% ish, five to 10% jumps, uh, five to 10% jumps in, uh, between block to block as far as like max estimated maxes and things like that. You want to be setting goals like that. Okay. Again, that's my opinion as far as how I would do things. Uh, maybe other coaches have different numbers. Doesn't matter. Uh, get the point. Uh, number four, then we got peak smart and don't miss lifts. Uh, this is a big one. And I mean, I, I've had a couple examples just recently of a, a few athletes that I've been working with uh, that have uh, taken the weight that I have programmed and or done it for the sets across instead of like uh, doing like a top set and the drop sets uh, or the back down sets after that. Um, you know, fatigue is going to be 
happening no matter what. And think of like, you know, drop sets and top sets as a way to manage that fatigue and still kind of keep that stimulus. Um, so in a peak, we're going to be building up that fatigue and adding more stimulus as we try to really push that our body um, so we can get that like overcompensation once we do uh, recover. Um, so m like missing a lift or over exceeding our ability, and this goes back to setting realistic goals, uh, that can mess up that process. That can really mess up that process. So you want to make sure that you know you're make you're making good calls and you're hitting lifts uh, in your peak and not missing those. Okay. Um, if you do, that's not a big deal. You know, you just adjust. You uh, maybe program a little bit less uh, later in the week so that you can allow your body to recover. Um, if you're working with a coach, they should know exactly what to do in situations like that. That kind of stuff happens all the time. Um, but it is avoidable. Uh, that's for sure. Um, number five, then we got here, practice commands. You got to make sure you do that. Okay. Like number one thing, practice commands is probably number two as far as like, obviously just showing up on meet day, you know, uh, know the rules that goes along with that. Know the rules, uh, and make sure that when you've been lifting the past, Probably, I, I mean, do it all the time, honestly, in your head, uh, but four to six weeks out, you know, start adding that stuff in, okay? It doesn't hurt, you know, once you're comfortable with it, it ain't a big deal. It does not matter. It is something that you don't even, I honestly, when I am up on that platform, I don't think about those commands a whole lot because uh, I've already practiced the pause enough. I've already practiced taking my time when I unrack that squat and when I rack that squat. I've already practiced holding the bar uh, in a locked out position, you know, during the deadlift. So it's not that big of a deal. But if you don't ever practice those and then you go into meet day and you try to do that, it's going to be a lot more difficult to be able to follow those rules and listen to that while you're trying to pay attention to everything else around you and your own body and the fact that you're trying to max effort lift. It's just a lot, okay? So why not just take a little bit of thinking off your plate and practice those a little earlier? Um, okay, we got the next one here. Be conservative and plan ahead. Uh, you know, this one, we're talking about planning ahead for like attempts, okay? Uh, if you got a coach, they'll do this for you, okay? Um, but when we plan attempts, we wanna kinda like think about going first, you know, six for six, and then we'll think about like, okay, what can I do after that? Or sorry, not six for six. Uh, we're thinking about going two, you know, we're going to get two successful attempts before we kind of decide uh, like the next big jump that we want to do. Okay. At least that's how I want to plan it or how I think I want to plan it. And this is for beginners again, because remember, we're trying to go nine for nine here. All right. So I want to go for sure two for two, or two, sorry, two for three, and then on that third one, maybe have one to three options, okay, that are, I feel great, eh, that last second attempt was pretty difficult, and that third one where it's like, okay, let's just full send it, all right? We got three different kind of levels for that third attempt. This is, again, how I would plan it for beginners. Um, after getting their first two successful attempts uh, in their bench, squat, and deadlift, okay? Um, when you're talking about openers and stuff like that, guys, we're not talking about setting PRs. We're talking about doing something that's like an easy triple, all right? We don't want to be able to, uh, like, we don't want to fail for sure on that first attempt because that is going to that is gonna fuck with your mind, like, a lot, uh, especially um going in, like into a deadlift like if you miss your first attempt whew, like you got that whole meat behind you okay and you've done all that work and then you got that pressure now riding of oh sh shit if i miss this then i'm done you know so make sure you plan ahead for that uh i like having a little score card sheet uh when i before i didn't have a coach uh I had a little scorecard, like a little sheet I would bring with me. 
for my own athletes, that's what I do too. I have a little, just I keep it in my pocket of, you know, what the, I, the attempts I want them to go for. Um, usually the first and second attempts, first one for sure is just to, hey, hit this number. Second one, you know, if they're feeling good that first attempt, I'll maybe go a little bit more. Um, but for sure that third attempt is like I'm gauging on how those first two attempts went. Um, and there's a little bit more of like a good, pretty good, and best option, you know, uh, if that makes sense. Okay, number seven. Know the Federation's rules. This one's easy, guys. I'm not going to explain it past that. If you ain't reading the rule book before you go out there, uh, then you're not going out there prepared. And then you have just spent months preparing for something that you don't want to finish, essentially. Okay? It is easy to access. You go on USPA or whatever Federation you're uh, going with. You go on their website. You read the rule book. Make sure all your equipment's good to go. Make sure you know what the commands are going to be like. Make sure you know where your hand placement, feet placement, hips, shoulders, head, whatever, everything. Make sure you know that stuff. Read the rule book. There's so many questions that I see on forums and things like that that uh, are the same repetitive things. Uh, can I do this? Can I do that? When the rule book says it right there and you just got to read it. Okay. Uh, real simple. Get a handler. Uh, this one you know, is an optional one, but I would say probably get somebody that can help you out, okay? Uh, my wife is a wonderful person. She helps me every single meet. She is there to like grab my headphones before I go out on the platform. She's there with my chalk, my water, food. She's there to um, you know support me. Uh, get somebody like that, okay? If you don't have somebody like that, um, that's okay too. Um, just Keep it simple. Keep it easy on yourself. Okay. Remember that you're going to be you know, heightened a little bit. Um, so if possible, having just anybody, even some just, you know, maybe a per person that's also doing the meet uh, to help you out. Uh, you guys can help each other. Okay. Um, but just somebody. Bring snacks uh, is number nine. That one's a big one. Uh, make sure you eat. I have suffered myself of not eating enough and not drinking enough water uh, during meat day. Uh, it's a consistent problem I have because uh, I do get nervous. Um, but it's definitely something that you want to uh, be doing in between, uh, mostly, mostly in between lifts. I would not recommend eating too much in between attempts. I would focus on getting more like of your liquids during between your attempts if you would like to. Um, but for the most part, we want to focus on getting, you know, a meal, like some kind of food that's carb, full carbs, uh, simple and complex, not a lot of fiber, um, and maybe a little bit of protein too, like in low fat. Uh, something that's just going to be quick energy, be there for you. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then number 10, guys, is going to be uh, don't get too excited, okay? And that one, what I mean by that is simply we want to just kind of be at a point where we're managing our excitement and we're using that to our advantage, okay? We don't let our emotions get into it where we're, like, going to call something, an attempt that's going to be unreasonable or uh, kind of fail a lift because of fear or something like that. But we definitely do want to make sure that we uh, kind of like use the excitement that everyone will feel and the hype. Because I mean, anybody that's been to a lifting comp or a powerlifting comp knows that there's hype. You know, there's lots of hype there. Um, we want to use that power, channel it through specifically to when we're standing up in our squat, pressing our bench press, or pushing through that floor picking that barbell up, okay? So making sure that you channel that stuff and just, like, remain calm when you're getting up on that platform, okay? Just relax. Just think about it as any other training day, all right? Just doing it in front of a bunch of people on a stage in a singlet. Just a little different. <laughs> um, I hope this video helped you guys out. Uh, we got it again. Uh, down in Iowa, uh, a bunch of friends and stuff like that competing, and then along with uh, a bunch of other people I know and in my uh, social media group that are competing in the next 
uh, a month or two here. Good luck, guys, uh, to the beginners. Uh, if you have, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you haven't done any of the things that I talked about, make sure you do that, okay? Uh, peace out, guys, and again, may the fourth be with you.